Hi, this is my response. The thing that I'm trying to do is to replicate Stan Meyer's work. His idea is to create an electric oscillating circuit using a coil and a reactor. The reactor consists of two stainless steel pipes placed one inside of the other, creating this way a capacitor. The devices, the coil and the capacitor, at a certain frequency, called a resonant frequency, start to transfer energy from one to the other, creating a buildup of energy in the capacitor, resulting in a rise in voltage using low power. Important to Stan Meyer, as I understood, was using distilled water. A capacitor is made of two plates of conducting material separated by a non-conductive material called the dielectric. The dielectric in this case is water, distilled water. Permittivity is the property of a material to allow or to resist the passing of an electric field through it. As big as the number, the better. Water has the dielectric value of 80. The water molecule. The water molecule is made of one atom of oxygen and two of hydrogen that are sharing electrons to obtain a stable form creating H2O, water. The bond is called covalent bonding. Besides that, they are hydrogen bonding that give water its most unique properties. The molecule is held together by electronic forces. In general, the atom is made of equal number of protons and electrons. Protons are positive and electrons are negative. As the rule, opposites attract, likewise repulse. So, the water molecule stays together by these electric forces of attraction between protons that are positive of one atom and the electrons which are negative of the other atom. The water molecule has a dipole, meaning that it has two polarized sides. A negative side is situated on the oxygen part and the positive one is situated on the hydrogen part. The water molecule is shaped as a V. This property is important as the water molecule behaves in an electric field as a magnetic needle behaves in a magnetic field. It orients itself to the electric field lines. So, the idea of Stan Meyer was to create between the plates forces bigger than those that hold the water molecule in order to break it apart. At resonance, the voltage in the capacitor grows a lot and, as a concept, it's stated that is needed 2000 volts for a 1 mm gap of distilled water to make it conduct and to disintegrate into the elementary components. What is needed? Well, we need a source of square impulses created easy by a circuit, built with two timers 555 or any other source that lets us modify the mark and space of impulse and most importantly the frequency. The trick is finding the resonant frequency for a setup like this. Is uh, needed some kind of scanning or sensing device in a loop fashion and when found the frequency to be locked, maintained, now varying only the voltage or the mark and space of the rectangular poles. The secret consists of the following. Input source maybe with an adjustable voltage from 0 to 35, a step-up transformer made to work at high frequencies, the ones with the ferrite cores 
or matte gloss. Of course, not laminated iron cores. Those are made to work only at low frequencies, 50 to 60 hertz. The secondary of the step-up transformer, as I understood, gets out maximum 105 volts, a ratio of 1 to 3, a diode, a choke, which is a coil, the capacitor, and optionally another choke. The second choke uh, probably made adjustable for fine-tuning. This may not be necessary if the impulse source has scanning and sensing possibilities. The sensing possibility is a third coil on the core used to detect the increase in voltage at resonance. For the charge in the capacitor to keep building up, the two circuits must be kept separated, meaning the primary cir circuit and the secondary circuit must be connected only through magnetic coupling to the charging circuit. The charging circuit is composed of the secondary circuit, diode, choke, capacitor, optionally another choke. So, the charge voltage potential between the capacitor plates keeps getting bigger and bigger until the water molecule is elongated and the distance between hydrogen and oxygen increases to a point where the covalent bond ceases to exist. It breaks. The experiment that I tried was a simple electrolysis because I had only tap water so no capacitor and of course no step up transformer no chokes, no sensing means. Of course, the, the traditional way of uh, electrolysis of water is well known and not a good way to go, it's inefficient. You need a lot of power of amperage. Plus, in the usual electrolysis of water, salt is added to increase conductivity of water. So, uh, it is clear we are not trying to do this. We want to make it isolating, but not to use distilled water. We want to use normal tap water or groundwater, whatever, but not distilled water. Plus, when you introduce table salt, when uh, you are doing the electrolysis, you are releasing chloride as a gas which is toxic and uh, pollutes the air. So this is the end. The thing that I need help with is creating the capacitor to use normal tap water or maybe ground water as it has no chloride in it. I need advice isolating the plates from the water to make a capacitor. If you have any ideas, I'm listening. Well, goodbye and thank you for the interest.